Welcome to our Career Academy for the spring semester. This is session one. And my name is Mariana Yerby. I'm the Associate Director of Career and Professional Education on the Manhattan campus. Um, I'm also manager of Career and Curriculum, which means EPIC. And I did this presentation with my colleague, Sam Karpilov. Um, so we'll get started. I'm going to share my screen and we'll start the presentation. Okay. All right. So this first career academy is actually called Get Hired in 2023 with your soft skills. As I said, this is session one, and we'll go a little bit over what career academy is. It's a series of four workshops designed to keep you current with your career education. Um, if you can complete these the series, you will earn a digital badge. And you will also be entered into a raffle to uh, buy um, to win a brand new iPad. So don't miss out. To count your attendance, you just submit a quiz at the end of, the, of each session. So we'll show you that. With that, um, we'll get started. Our agenda today will be different types of skills, um, a deep dive on soft skills. Specifically, we're going to be focusing on that. Um, an evaluation of skills, um, a recent study, we'll share that with you. Um, then it's your turn, and we'll um, go back and forth doing a little activity about skills and trying to identify what, what different skills are and what kind of behaviors show different skills. Um, and then finally, we'll talk about how you actually communicate your skills to prospective employers. All right, so we have different types of skills. These are the two main types. Um, first is hard skills and then soft skills. As I said, today we're focusing on soft skills but I also want to mention what hard skills are. So hard skills are specific, it's specific knowledge and abilities you need to do a job um, or in a specific industry. Um, they're objectively measurable and it's what you know and can do. So it's very specific, it's very tangible and it's specific to different industries or jobs. Whereas soft skills are universally desired in all jobs and industries. They're subjectively assessed with varying criteria, and it's how you do what you do. So where hard skills is what you do and can do, soft skills are how you do what you do. Um, this will be clearer once we talk about the soft skills. All right, so um, our main guidance for career education is an organization called NACE, National Association of Colleges and Employers, and which we are part of. Mercy College is a part of this organization. It's a national organization, um, 14,000 college professionals um, and recruiting professionals, um, career and recruiting professionals belong to it. And the main goal is to share um, information um, so that we are better preparing our students for careers after graduation. So um, they came up with a career, NACE came up with a career readiness initiative in 2015, which was really meant to answer the question, what makes a successful career, a successful um, college graduate um, entering their career? What is it that they need? What makes them succeed? So with that, this took a, a long time, of course, and they consulted um, recruiters and, and hiring managers in all industries across the U.S., and they came up with eight career readiness competencies. And this, again, they um, they have worked on every year. This is the most recent list, but they keep um, tightening it up and making sure it's still current. Um, so the newest list is this one, which is from 2021. And these are the eight career readiness competencies. So again, we're trying to establish a foundation upon which a successful, successful career is built. So these, these are the skills we're gonna focus on today, these competencies. If you want to read more about the career readiness competencies and NACE, you can um, scan this QR code. Okay. So the first one, career and self-development. So most of these are very self-explanatory, but we're gonna go through the exact definition. It's uh, to proactively develop oneself and one's careers through continual personal and professional learning, awareness of one's strengths and weaknesses, 
navigation of career opportunities and networking to build organizations within and relationships within and without one's organization. So it's what you think of, it's how you manage your career and how you look for learning opportunities and um, developing um, your, your yourself. That's the first one. Second one is communication. Well, you all know this and you've all heard about it in every class, how important it is and from every employer. Clearly and effectively exchange information, ideas, facts, and perspectives with people inside and outside an organization, right? So we know how important it is and how valuable it is to have it. Critical thinking. Identify and respond to needs based upon an understanding of situational context and logical analysis of relevant information, right? So it's understanding what is going on within the context and um, being able to analyze logically the information, coming up with solutions. Mm, next one is equity and inclusion. Demonstrate awareness, attitude, knowledge, and skills required to equitably engage and include people from different local and global cultures. Engage in anti-racist practices that actively challenge the systems, structures, and policies of racism. That one's also self-explanatory and incredibly important. Leadership. Um, recognize and capitalize on personal and team strengths to achieve organizational goals. So here I want to make sure you notice it's not just you being a leader, but it's also recognizing um, each other's strengths, right, and bringing that up. So within a team, making sure that you bring out the best in everyone and that you're aware of everyone's strengths to meet the goals. Professionalism. Um, knowing work environments differ greatly, understand and demonstrate effective work habits and act in the interest of the larger community and workplace. So we'll go into a little bit more about what behaviors are professional and what is considered professionalism, uh, but it's what you already have an idea of um, showing up on time, being prepared, um, being ready for meetings. Um, yes, those type of things. We'll get give you more examples later. Teamwork. You know this and you've done it many, many times in your team projects already um, at Mercy and I'm sure beyond. Um, build and maintain collaborative relationships to work effectively toward common goals while appreciating diverse viewpoints and shared responsibilities. Right, so I don't need to go into this one more. You, you're probably very good at it. Technology, this is key. Understand and leverage technologies ethically to enhance efficiencies, complete tasks and accomplish goals. So again, we're not talking about the hard skills, which is how well do you know Excel, PowerPoint, um, whatever it is, Microsoft Office, all, all the systems. It is, how you understand and use these technologies to make work more efficient and accomplish goals, right? So maybe you're not the expert on, um, I don't know, SPSS, but you know it exists to solve different problems that can make work better. So it's that, it's not the hard skill, which is knowing the SPSS, but it's knowing that it exists and how it can help solve uh, problems and accomplish goals. That's a soft skill technology. All right, so we're going to go into a little bit of a challenge, which is really an exercise of um, we give you some behaviors and we identify which of the competencies it's talking about. Before we go into that, I wanted to share a recent study done again by NACE, National Association of Colleges and Employers, about how students rate themselves on these competencies versus how employers rate um, students on these competencies. So these are new hires. They're not actually students. They're new hires. So recent college graduates. Um, and then the set of competencies, the same one that we discussed in the beginning, the same eight competencies. And it's asking the new hire to say how proficient they are in these competencies and then have the employer rate the same person and say how they rate them. So um, I'm not going to go into all of them, but you see there's quite a discrepancy in some of them. Um, the one that is the closest is actually equity and inclusion where employers rate um, new hires very similar to how they rate themselves. So this is um, a 
accurate self-aware um, self-assessment. And it shows, of course, how wonderful new hires are in this regard right now. Technology is, is there as well. Tech teamwork is pretty close as well. But then here are the ones that I want to pay attention to, professionalism, leadership, and career and self-development. You see there's big gaps between how employers rate new hires and how new hires rate themselves. So we want to make this gap smaller. We want to make sure that new hires are ready for this and behave more professional or professional and show more leadership and career self-development um, throughout their career, especially in the beginning for sure, where it's quite noticeable according to, to this study. All right, so with that, we're gonna start with critical thinking and we're gonna give you some examples of what that actually means. I know I gave you the definition earlier, but here are some examples. Accurately summarize and interpret data with an awareness of personal biases that may impact outcomes. So some of these are quite wordy. I might not read all of them, but um, for you to get the, the clear understanding of what we're talking about when we say critical thinking. Gather and analyze information from a diverse set of sources to fully understand a problem, right? And then make decisions and solve problems using sound, reasoning, and judgment. Great, clear. Now the next skill, I'm not going to say what it is yet. First, I'm going to show some behaviors that point to it, and then hopefully you immediately can guess which one we're talking about. All right, these are the skills at the bottom, so you remember what they are. And the behaviors are solicit and use feedback from multiple cultural perspectives to make inclusive and equity-minded decisions actively contribute to inclusive and equitable practices that, that influence individual and systemic change. I'm sure you already know. Seek global cross-cultural interactions and experiences that enhance one's understanding of people from different groups. I guess you all know that, equity and inclusion. All right. The next one will be um, I'll give you a definition, some of the behaviors of career and self that show career and self-development. So show an awareness of own strengths in areas of development, professionally advocate for oneself and other, and participate in further education, training, and other events to support one's career. Clear. Um, we go the other way around. I'll give you some behaviors and you tell me what competency they point to. All right, the reminders of all the competencies are at the bottom. Here we go. Understand the importance of and demonstrate verbal, written, and nonverbal body language abilities. Employ active listening, persuasion, and influencing skills. Let's see what else. Communicate in a clear and organized manner. Um, ask appropriate questions for specific information from supervisors and others. As you guessed it, I am sure. Communication. All right. Next one, we'll give you some examples of what teamwork is or how it's um, exhibited. Employ personal strengths, knowledge, and talents to complement those of others. Exercise the ability to compromise and be agile. That's it. <laughs> teamwork. Those are the ones we have. Hopefully, it's clear and, and quite obvious. Um, and the other way around, I'll give you the competencies, the skills, and some behaviors, and then we'll guess which ones they point to. Navigate change and be open to learning new technologies. Use technology to improve efficiency and productivity in your work. Identify appropriate technology for completing specific tasks. Manage technology to integrate information to support relevant and timely decision making. Yep, it's technology. Okay, great. Now, some behaviors that show leadership. Plan, initiate, manage, and complete projects. Inspire, persuade, and motivate self and others under a shared vision. As I said earlier, it's not just thinking about yourself, but also others. That's all we have for each. All right, then the final one, um, which will say the competencies and 
guess which one they point to, which behaviors they point to. Act equitably with integrity and accountability to self, others, and the organization. Maintain a positive personal brand in alignment with organization and personal career values. Be present and prepared. Be dependable, prioritize and complete tasks to accomplish goals, meet or exceed goals and expectations, have attention to detail, show a high level of dedicate, dedication towards doing a good job. Professionalism. These are very, very clear and very important. All right. So finally, we're going to talk about how you actually discuss and highlight these skills on a resume or with an employer. So the first thing we recommend is you read the job description, description carefully and identify the required key skills, right? That will be listed in the section of the, of the job posting. Make sure these are also obvious on your resume. A cover letter is also the ideal place to explain what skills you have and give examples when you demonstrated them, right? So here's where you can elaborate a little bit more about the key skills that employers are looking for, uh, specifically for the job that you're applying for, and how you've already exhibited it or how you um, yeah, developed it. And finally, for an interview or at a career fair, come prepared to discuss your top three skills. So make sure you have those clear um, and you have one example for each, just in case you need it um, to show how you, again, have, uh, have the skill or where you've demonstrated it. So it's clear it's a good idea to have the top three that you know are true for you, ready to go for an interview or for a um, career fair. Now, thank you so much. Um, we will share this um, again. So you can, this is the survey, so you can count your attendance. So make sure you do take it um, to count and be entered into the raffle and hopefully earn a badge if you attend three. That's it. Thank you so much for, for your attention. And I hope this brought you some good information. We're always here for you. You can reach us at cpd at mercy.edu. Thank you so much. Bye.